This lesson is about atoms. Has anybody heard of atoms? Perhaps you've seen the TV show The Big Bang Theory, or maybe even The Simpsons. They talk about atoms a lot, and other things too. So where are atoms? Can we see them? Yep, atoms are everywhere. So where, for example? Yes, the desk. The desk is made of atoms. In fact, everything is made of atoms. How about you? Are you made of atoms? Yep, you too. You're made of atoms, just like me. And even the air is made of atoms. If we just wave our hand, we'll get a, a fan and go like this, we can feel the atoms of the air hitting our face and even making our hair move. That's, that's really showing us that air is not just nothing. You go like this, it seems like there's nothing there, but actually that's full of atoms. This is, this is a very good way of showing that there are atoms in air. This is an air gun, and when we pull it like this, we can shoot a bullet of air at whatever, at you, for example. Big or small? Yep, small. Very, very small. For example, is one of the hairs on your head made of atoms? Yep, it's a thing, so it's made of atoms. Everything is made of atoms. How many atoms wide is one of the hairs on your head? Take a guess. Uh, 10? Yeah, that's a big number, but it's bigger than 10. Somebody else? 50? No. Bigger than 50? Bigger than 100? A thousand. Wow, that's a lot of atoms to go across the, the width of your hair, but it's actually greater than a thousand and greater than 10,000. A million, that's right. That's how many atoms wide one of your hairs is. So what does that tell you about the size of atoms? Are they big or small? Incredibly small. So small we can't see them. They've been hiding from scientists for thousands of years. That's why we didn't know they were there, because atoms are so incredibly tiny. We need a very special microscope to be able to see them, called an electron microscope. This picture shows a boy typing, and you can see a keyboard, headphones, and a desk. Where would the atoms be in this picture? They're too small to see, but if we could make them bigger, they would look like little dots or lumps, or particles. And they are shaped like marbles. This shape is called a sphere. Let's draw some dots in using a black pen. <clears throat> we'll just do his face and his headphones to make it quicker. Now I'm going to draw some red dots, and they're bigger too. Why would I do that? Well, do you think the boy is made of only one kind of atom? No. There are many kinds of atoms in the world, and we can show them here with different sizes and colours. That doesn't mean that these atoms really are these colours, but it's a good way of showing them apart. Oh, and can you see that the headphones have different kinds of atoms too, but that some, but that some of them are the same kind as in the boy? but the boy seems to have more blue atoms than the headphones. We can't show it here, but their combinations are different too, and we'll talk about that later. What about the air? Air is mostly made of two kinds of atoms, and notice that they are far apart from each other. Gases are like that. So there's more than one kind of atom. In fact, you've heard of many of the different kinds of atoms, even though you probably don't realise. Have you heard of the word hydrogen? Yes? How about carbon? Nitrogen? Oxygen? Uranium? Copper, even? And gold? They're kinds of atoms that... that they're the names of different kinds of atoms. 
but usually those atoms are all mixed up. Just like in the boy here, we've got blue atoms, green atoms, and black atoms. In fact, the kinds of atoms that make you up are mostly carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and a little bit of nitrogen, phosphorus, and sulfur, and some other kinds as well, but not so many of them. So there's usually a jumble of atoms that make up the different things in the world. The desk, is it made of one kind of atom, do you think? No, it's mostly carbon, nitrogen and oxygen. However, sometimes, and it's pretty rare, a kind of atom doesn't like to join up with other kinds of atoms. An example of that is gold. Gold atoms like to stay on their own. And when we find an object or a thing which is made up of just one kind of atom, we give that thing a special name. We call it an element. So an element is a substance, a thing, made of just one kind of atom. How many different kinds of atoms are there in the world? Good question. Scientists have been looking in the world for hundreds of years and eventually they found 92 different kinds of atoms. And when they looked into outer space, the strange thing is that they found the same 92 different kinds of atoms. And because an element is made of just one kind of atom, there must be 92 elements altogether as well. So what's the difference between these kinds of atoms? But another really important difference is how heavy they are, their weights. I've got over here an example of the lightest kind of atom in the universe. Here we go. And I'm going to turn it around because it's got its name on it. Here, we, here it is. Hydrogen. It's lighter than air. Hydrogen. Let's have a look at that word. H-Y-D-R-O-G-E-N. We'll count the number of letters. It's eight. Eight letters in the word hydrogen. Now scientists like to do things the easy way if they can. So rather than writing the word hydrogen all the time, they often shorten the word as much as possible. So if I were to ask you to shorten the word hydrogen to just one letter, what letter would you choose? Yep, you'd choose H. It's sort of like a nickname, if you like. It's a shorthand way of writing hydrogen. So whenever you see the letter capital H, you know that they're talking about hydrogen atoms. Scientists also give elements or, or types of atoms a number. The number corresponds to where they are in the list, starting from the lightest kind of atom right through to the heaviest kind. What kind of number would we give hydrogen? What place in the list is it? Well, it's number one, and we call that number its atomic number. You can say the word atomic number. It's a really scientific word and makes you sound like a scientist too. So hydrogen, that's its name. Capital H is its symbol, its shorthand way of writing. And number one is its atomic number. Now I've got another kind of atom here too, which is, well, looks very much like hydrogen, but it isn't. They're different to hydrogen in that the atoms of the helium, for one thing, are a bit heavier than hydrogen's atoms. So what would you choose for helium if you wanted to make a shorthand for it? Well, it also starts with an H. So would you choose H? No, you wouldn't choose H. Why? Why not? Because H has already been taken by hydrogen. So scientists have to make it a little bit different. So they give this shorthand for helium, H-E, capital H, little e. So it's given two letters to make it a bit different. So what symbol, what shorthand do you think we'd give gold? G, perhaps, or G-O. That makes sense. It could be G or G-O, but in fact, it's not. It's A-U. Well, A-U is the name of gold in Latin. Helium also, as we can see, is very light. 
In fact, it's the second lightest atom in the whole world, in the whole universe. Remember we gave hydrogen a number based upon where it is in the list from the lightest kind of atom to the heaviest kind. Because it was the lightest, we gave it the number one. In the case of helium, it's the second lightest, so we give it the number two. Helium's atomic number is two. What do you think the atomic number of uranium would be? Remember, uranium is right down the bottom of the list. It's the 92nd ele element, so its atomic number is 92. Every kind of atom has its own number and its own shorthand way of writing, its own atomic number and its own symbol. Now scientists, this list, of atom, this list of atom kinds, from the lightest to the heaviest, consisting of 92 kinds of atoms, is put on a very special table, is, put on a very, is a very special list. This list of the 92 atoms from the heavy, this list of 92 atoms, this list of 92 kinds of atoms from the lightest hydrogen through to the heaviest uranium, is a very special list and scientists call it the periodic table. In fact it's also called the periodic table of the elements because we're talking about different kinds of atoms or different elements. The periodic what I'd like you to do is find hydrogen on your list. Can everybody find hydrogen on this table? Put, put up your hand if you can find it. Good. Where is it? Top left hand corner right there. Everybody got it. So what's the little number at the top of the square? Yep, it's number one. That's its atomic number. And what's the letter there, the shorthand letter, the symbol? H, capital H. Good. Okay, next one is to find helium. Everybody find helium. Put up your hand when you found it. Okay. Good, good, good. Where is it? The top right hand corner, here. Everybody find it? Tell me if you can't. What's the little number above in the top of the square? Two. Atomic number? Two. That's its atomic number. And what's its symbol? The shorthand way of writing? H-E. Good. Now what's the third one? What's the third lightest element? Can you find it? Good. Put up your hand if you can find it. Excellent. What's the name of that? That's right, lithium. And its atomic number is 3. What's the name of the element with atomic number 4? Yep, beryllium. It's a bit hard to say. It's named after beryl, I believe. And its symbol, is it one letter or two? It's B, E, capital B, little. What I want everybody to do is to find the element with atomic number 16. Put up your hand when you found number 16. Good. So what's the name of that one? What's the symbol? What's the, what's the letter? S. It stands for sulphur. Can everybody find number 16, sulphur? Good. Okay, what about element number 56? It's a bit far further away. Atomic number 56 is barium. Good. Now I'm going to give you a slightly different question. What is the atomic number of phosphorus? Now phosphorus has the symbol P. So everybody find P? Just a capital P? Okay, it's right next to sulphur actually and its atomic number is 15. Another one just like that. Uh, let's try 
nitrogen, N. Can you find N? It's right at the top. Good. So N, its atomic number is 7. So you can jump from the atomic number to the name or from the name to the atomic number. Do you also notice that the periodic table is written in rows? What row is fluorine in? F. Okay. Find fluorine. F. And you can see that it's in the second row. One, two. Can you also see that there are vertical columns here? Okay, those vertical columns, scientists call them groups. And they're like families of elements. Our families are groups that have, of elements that have some things in common with each other. They're not identical, just like the members of your family. You might have, you might all be tall or you might all have dark hair. So if I were to ask you, let's go to fluorine again, what group is it in? We've seen that it's in row two, but what group is it in? It's in group 17. How about barium, the one we looked at before over here? What group is it in? Group two. Good, this one here. What's another element in the same group as sulfur? So let's go to sulfur. Here's sulfur, and it's in group 16. So what's another one in 16? Well, oxygen or selenium, any of these ones down here would, would be the right answer. The periodic table is split into rows and groups. And there's one more important feature of the periodic table, and you can see it has a grey diagonal band here, these elements here. What it does is it splits the periodic table into elements that are metals. All of these guys on this left-hand side are metals. Guys on the right-hand side are non-metals. The exception for that is hydrogen. Hydrogen is on the left-hand side as though it's in the metals category. That can't be a metal. Metals are not gases. You can see also that we've got some colour coding here. Um, here it says that the blue ones are gases. That's just the symbols are written in blue. And the ones that are written in red are liquids. And the ones that are written in black are solids. Is element number 39. Everybody find number 39 and tell me what its symbol is. Yes, it's Y. The symbol Y. It's a metal. It's on the metal side of the periodic table of that group grey diagonal. How about element number um, 34? 34 is, everybody find it? Element 34 is selenium, SE, because it's on the right of the, of the grey diagonal. We know that it's a non-metal.